Life is a journey. It has its ups and its downs, but through it all, because of Jesus Christ, you can have that joy, that peace, and that contentment. And we believe that God has amazing things for you. We want to invite you to join us for the next half hour as we hear an exciting, life-changing message from my dad and your friend, Del Hissong, right here on Joy for the Journey. Hi, I'm Del Hissong. Recently, we had a whole bus tour and conference in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was sold out. But each morning, I shared a devotional from the Word of God. And one morning, I shared about letting your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. You see, I believe that our lives will either draw people to Christ or it'll repel people and they want nothing to do with him. And God's word makes it so very clear that we need to let the light of Jesus Christ shine through us so that people would be attracted and drawn to the Savior. That's my desire, and I trust it's your desire as well to just be the light of Christ and allow that light to shine so that other people will be drawn to a Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to give a couple of examples, and I trust they'll help you in your Christian walk today. Each year, our family hosts an event at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We enjoy delicious food, including going to the largest seafood calabash buffet. We have a lot of fun and enjoy great fellowship with those that attend from all over the country. You just never know what may happen next. The trip also includes going to Carolina Opry. I'll be hosting morning devotionals. And yes, we leave plenty of time for shopping. The outlets are just down the street. Our family, the Hissongs, along with our friends, the Down East Boys, will be providing music all week long. Each room overlooks the gorgeous Myrtle Beach. If you'd like more information, go to christmasbythesea.org. Or call 865-278-4727. That's 865-278-4727. This morning I wanted us to take our Bibles. If you have your Bibles, if not, just listen. But in Matthew 5 and verse 16... It is probably my very favorite verse in the Bible. And oftentimes if people buy a CD from us or a book that I've written, I will, and they want me to sign it, I'll put my name, and underneath it I'll put Matthew 5, 16. Because I think that this verse tells exactly how we're to be living and acting and behaving in these days in which we live. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Friends, we need to allow the light of Jesus Christ to shine through us. People need to see Jesus in you, and they need to see Jesus in me. For those of us who are here on this tour that we've been having here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, it's important that the wait staff that take care of us, the people at the hotels, everywhere that we go, I think it's important that they see the light of Jesus Christ shining through you and shining through me. I feel so strongly about that. And those who are watching and listening, for your friends, for your family, for the places that you work, places that you shop, they need to be seeing the light of Christ shining through you. I think about some examples of where that has not happened. And I'm going to share a couple of those. And then I want to share an example of how we've seen it happen, and the difference it made in somebody's life. Our family had the chance to minister in a church this last February. And as we were up front, my wife and my son and I were singing. And I looked in the back, and my grandchildren travel with us. I've got a 13-year-old granddaughter, 10-year-old grandson, and Richard's wife, and they're always on the road with us all the time. She homeschools them, and I have a chance to be with my grandchildren almost every single day. I know that some of you envy me. Others of you are thinking, how in the world can you do that every single day? (laughs) But, But they do. They travel with us. And so they were in the church service, as they always are day after day, and they were probably three quarters of the way back. 
We were singing and ministering and talking, and all of a sudden, my daughter-in-law stood up, and along with my two grandchildren, they moved to the other side of the pew all the way across. And I thought, that is so strange. That is so unusual. I wonder what's going on. Well, we later found out what had gone on. There was a husband and wife that were sitting together just in front of my grandchildren and my daughter-in-law. And my grandson must have stood up for a minute to show something to his mother. And when he did, that lady turned around in her pew and she looked at my grandchildren and she said, you are bad children. If I had known that you were sitting behind me, I never would have sat here. My grandchildren were devastated, by the way. My granddaughter thought it was a joke because they were very well behaved that day. If they hadn't been, they knew they'd hear it from their father later on. You might know him as being a comedian, but they know him as being a disciplinarian. And so they knew they'd hear about it. He'd take care of it later if there was a problem, but there wasn't a problem. So my granddaughter smiled at the lady. She thought she was being funny. She thought it was a joke. And the lady got sterner, and she said, Young lady, I don't know what you're smiling about. Nothing is funny. I would not have sat here if I'd known you were bad children sitting behind me. And so my daughter-in-law stood, and with my two grandchildren, they moved away. After that service, there was because it was a homecoming service, they were having a meal. And Richard and I went out first into the fellowship hall, and I, I thought it strange that our wives and my two grandchildren were not there. And we later learned that my grandchildren were out in the motorhome crying because they were so upset about what that lady had said to them. Friends, letting our light shine before others is so important. But when we don't allow our light to shine before others, we can drive people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. You want to win people to Christ? You want your life to be attractive as far as Jesus Christ is concerned? Let your light so shine before men. You know what's even worse? We later learned two things. One, that man and that woman had been missionaries. And you think, what it must have been like on the field with people like that? And the second thing we learned, because we shared it with the pastor, what had happened, he said, they're visiting today. I don't even really hardly know who they are. But if it had been our first time, well, it was about our first time in that church. If we'd been visitors in the church looking for a church, let me tell you what, we'd have never gone back. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. I want to tell you one other story. Well, I'm going to tell you two more stories, but one that's negative and one that's positive. Before we went on the road full-time, and we've been out for years and years now, but I was a pastor. I was a pastor for 25 years. And in one of our churches, it was so exciting, a neighbor came into one of our services. And it's always neat when a neighbor comes in, and, and you're, you know they're right across the street or next door, and she and her husband came in, and there they were sitting in the pew. But what was more exciting is that at the end of that service, she gave her heart and life to Jesus Christ. And I trust whether you're here today or you're watching or listening that you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe I should just share quickly that that's the most important decision you could ever make in your life. When you repent of your sin and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and life to save you. She made that decision that day. And we believe that when you make that decision that the Lord washes your sin away, comes into your life, going to take you to heaven one day. That's why I trust you've made that most important decision in your life, because it determines your eternal destiny. She made that decision, and it was exciting that day. I always, you know, I never grow tired, or it never grows old when I see someone giving their heart and life to Christ, or I have the opportunity to lead someone to Christ. So she accepted Christ. And she came, I mean, she was so faithful. She'd come service after service. And then I was so heartbroken for her and with her when she came in one day and said, I have cancer. They just found out that I have cancer. But she had the joy of the Lord still living in her heart and her life. 
and she knew the decision she'd made. And, and, and I'll make this short and just say that it wasn't too long after that that she stopped coming to church. Well, since she was just across the street from the church that I was pastoring, after she'd missed two or three weeks, and I knew she was sick, she was going through treatment and all kinds of things, but I went across the street and I knocked on the door and she let me and I said, man, we really miss you at church. Is there anything we can help you with? And she said, well, I I'm not coming back. I said, why? And this is what she told me. She said, after I got sick, the only thing I can really wear right now is pants. And there was a lady in the church that came to me and said that I could not come into the church with pants on. And she said, and that wasn't all. She said, that same lady told me that I can't wear open-toed shoes. Now, maybe that's something you're very familiar with, but I thought, open-toed shoes, that, that isn't too bad a thing, is it? But for some people it must be, so I need to be very careful. I know that's very delicate. And as a result, she was not going to come back. Now that's not letting your light shine before other people. It's being more destructive. And I want my life to shine so that other people are drawn to the Savior. Don't you? That's what I want. We have some friends. And uh, the lady's father mid-70s, late-70s, something like that. And a couple of months ago, he had a mild heart attack. And so they took him into the hospital, and, and they decided to do a heart catheterization. And while they were doing that catheterization, they discovered that he needed a couple of stints in his heart. Now, here's a man who was very quiet, was not real boisterous, not real talkative, tried to share his faith by just being a gentle person and letting people see the light of Christ shining through him, but really never was somebody that would go out and witness or was strong that way at all. But he's had this heart attack. They bring him in for the heart catheterization. There are two doctors that are working on him, and as they're doing that heart catheterization, he could actually see the screen of how they're working on his heart. And they're having a really tough time getting one of the stints in. In fact, they weren't successful at all at getting it in. As he laid there on that table in the operating room, he looked at the doctors and he said, Do you believe in God? One doctor said, Absolutely not. I'm an atheist. I do not believe in God. And the other one said, Well, I think there must be a higher power, but I don't know much about it. That's all that man said. They couldn't get the stint in like they wanted. They finally finished up, and they put him in a room. And because of COVID, they wouldn't allow anybody to come into the hospital to visit with him. So there he was down at the other end of the hospital all by himself in a room alone. It was about a week later, after the heart catheterization, that a nurse called, 4 o'clock in the morning, and said to the daughter, I don't think your father's doing well. Would you like to come in and visit with him? And she said, really? They've been telling us we can't come in. You'd let us come in the hospital and visit with him? And the nurse said, yeah, I think you should. He's just not doing well. And so she got dressed, she got out, got in her car, 4 o'clock in the morning, she drove over to the hospital, and there she walks in and she visits with her dad. About an hour later, he closed his eyes for the final time and took his last breath. Only, I believe, to open them again in the presence of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so they went home, obviously heartbroken, even though oftentimes we know it's getting close and we know it's coming, it still is for so very, very difficult when we lose a loved one. And they went home to prepare for the service and all that would be taking place. It was three or four days later. The telephone rang. And when she answered the phone, the voice on the other end said, I'm one of the doctors that was in the operating room with your dad. 
and I'm so sorry to hear that he's passed away. She said, thank you, thank you for calling. He said, your dad had such perfect peace during that whole thing. Can you tell me what he had so I can have it too? And over the phone, over the phone, she led that doctor to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why? Because her father, who never saw this happen because he's already in heaven, but I believe one day that doctor will go and say thank you. Thank you for the letting your light shine in that operating room so that I could see. Because, friends, when we come to Christ and we have the peace, the joy, the contentment, and we share the light of Jesus Christ, other people ought to desire to have what we have. And that's the kind of life that I want. I want that kind of life like that man that was in that operating room, that with perfect peace, he knew they weren't able to get the stint in like they needed to. He must have known that what was happening, he did, he was aware. And yet he could just very gently and quietly with those doctors say, do you believe in God? And they saw that peace, they saw the light of Christ shining through him, and as a result, that one doctor now has come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You found Joy for the Journey with Del Hisong. Learn more online about this unique ministry and where you can see them in person at upcoming special events at thehissongs.com and look for the His Songs on your favorite social media platforms. That's T-H-E-H-Y-S-S-O-N-G-S dot com. You really can enjoy joy for your journey today. He tells us in this whole passage of Scripture, first of all, he talks about the light. Don't hide it under a bushel. You know this passage of Scripture like I do. Friends, it is so important that the world see Christ shining through us. I don't know how many times I've said on radio and television and in public events like this, I don't think it's going to be long till Jesus comes. And there's a lost world out there that is helpless, hopeless, and they're going to a helpless, hopeless eternity. And so we need to allow Christ to shine through us that people might see that light and be drawn to the Savior. Maybe you're not this person that can go out and be the greatest witness in the world. We're all called to be witnesses. Maybe it's hard for you to speak. Maybe you're nervous about speaking. But friends, when you do, it'll make a difference in people's life. Even just seeing your countenance and seeing what you're like. And they'll know They'll know that, wow, he's different, she's different, and I want what they have. That is so important. My first church, I was probably 22, 23 years of age. I knew everything back then. <laughs> now, 45 years later, I don't know anything. But, uh, see, you all know exactly what I'm talking about. A couple came into our church. They were visiting. They lived about 20 minutes away. And people greeted them and met them and were kind to them. I gave the invitation after the service. They didn't respond. I was. Everybody knew they were visitors. You all know when visitors come into your church, don't you? You know who they are. And finally, finished the service. I greeted them. They gave us a visitor's card. And on Tuesday night, one of my deacons called me and said, hey, do you want to go out on visitation tonight? I said, yes. There was a couple that visited here on Sunday. Let's go visit them. We drove 20 minutes away. I thought, how am I going to bring the conversation around to Jesus? It's so easy to talk about sports. It's so easy to talk about the weather. Some of us have been doing that today. Sometimes it's not as easy to talk about Jesus. And it should be because he's the most important thing in my life. But I went that night. My knees were shaking together. I told you I was young, just gotten out of college. And I knocked on the door. And they opened the door. And they looked at me, and this is what they said. When I'm nervous about bringing the conversation around of how I'm going to lead them to Christ or about the Lord, 
They said, wow, we love Sunday morning. Thank you so much for coming to visit us. At the end of the service, you kind of gave an you know, opportunity for people to accept the Lord or come forward. or do they, What in the world were you talking about? <laughs> and they're in their living room because people had been nice to them and greeted them when they came in and let the light of Christ shine through them. I had the joy of leading both that husband and wife to a saving knowledge of Christ. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Let's do that this whole time that we're together. And those who are watching and listening, let's go out and allow the light of Christ to shine through us. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that that would be a reality, that we'd allow the light of Christ to shine through us and that others would be drawn to a Savior. And Lord, we're going to praise you and thank you for what you're going to do in and through our lives. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe God has spoken to your heart and life today, and you know that you need Jesus Christ in your life. You want your sins forgiven. You want him to come into your life to save you. You want to know that you're going to have eternal life with him when this life is over. Why don't you right now with me bow your head and pray, and if you're sincere and pray a prayer of faith, God will hear you, he'll answer you, and he'll save you. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you'll forgive me of my sin, wash my sin away, Come into my heart, come into my life, and save me. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe that God came into your heart and life. He saved you. He washed your sins away. He's going to take you to heaven one day. Whether it's when the trumpet sounds and we're taken up to meet him, or through death. But either way, if you pray that prayer and you are sincere and really mean it, God has saved you, you've become part of the family of God, and you're saved. God bless you. Did you just accept Christ into your life? If so, we would love to hear from you so we can pray for you. Please email us at info at joyforthejourney.media so we can rejoice and celebrate this life-changing decision that you have made. We would also love to email a link to you with information that will help you start your Christian walk with the Lord. Your exciting journey starts today. Each year we have an exciting four-day retreat in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in the heart of Amish farmlands. People from all over the country come to enjoy a great smorgasbord all-you-can-eat meals. A guided tour of the area where you'll learn the customs and culture and watch them working in the field. Great gospel concerts with the Hisongs and Down East Boys. Morning devotionals from the Word of God. Shopping. and a theater production at Sight & Sound Theater. For more information, call 865-278-4727 or go to thehissongs.com. That's H-Y-S-S-O-N-G-S dot com. We appreciate all those who write in week after week who've either watched or listened to Joy for the Journey. I wish I had the time every week to share some of the stories that we receive from people out there. Ellie from New Hampshire wrote, she's a shut-in by the way, she said, you're my church each week. Thank you for your messages. Ellie, thank you for watching. And I pray that God would continue to bless you right where you're at. It's difficult to be shut in and, and be at home, but we appreciate you so very, very much. Wanda wrote, our family is going through a difficult time. And we needed to hear last week's message. Thank you, Wanda. And we'll pray for your family as you're going through that difficult time. And God is able to carry you through whatever it is that any of us might be going through. Betty wrote this. Thank you for your timely devotionals each Sunday. By the way, I do a Hisongs Facebook message every single Sunday that can be seen throughout the week. And so if you get on the Hisongs Facebook you can hear those messages. Thank you, Betty. I try to have a timely message, just that which people need right where they're at 
each and every week. Thank you for those who write in. I appreciate you so very much. Keep writing, and we'll keep reading some of those things. People often ask me about the illustrations and stories that I give during my messages. Most of them can be found in the two books that I've written. I wrote a book called Joy for the Journey, and the joy continues. And they contain true stories of events that have happened in our lives. If you go to thehissongs.com, you can find these books on our store and order them. And I believe that God will encourage you and bless you. It seems like every single week now we talk to people who are either listening or watching to Joy for the Journey. Uh, we've met those who are driving trucks who've said, I listen to you every single week. We run into people. Uh, last week, we were getting ready to set up in a church and somebody rushed through the door and said, I just heard you on the radio. Now, if I haven't heard from you, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know where you are, where you're listening from and continue to join with us week after week, whether it's by television or radio. We always enjoy hearing from you. And if you have prayer requests, don't hesitate to let us know what they are so we can pray for you. I said earlier, I hope that there's something that has been said today from the Word of God that would encourage you to live a life that is pleasing and honoring to the Lord, and a life filled with the light of Jesus Christ shining forth to the world. Thank you for watching Joy for the Journey. Joy for the Journey is a partner-supported ministry. If this program has been a help to you in your spiritual walk and you'd like to see others grow in their journey with the Lord, your support would be greatly appreciated. You can partner with Joy for the Journey in several ways. Visit thehissongs.com forward slash donate or you can send your donation to us at Hissong Family Ministries TV at P.O. Box 525 Rockport, Maine 04856. Stay in touch with Joy for the Journey by texting your name and email address to 844-820-4JOY. Be sure to tune in next time for Joy for the Journey with Del Hissong.